So at this point in time, I will call to the stage our speakers to tell us about uh, the Los Angeles ICANN meeting. To have a little uh, uh, focus on this, it will be in English language, and our guests who attended this meeting, Benjamin Fister and Tom McKenzie, will be uh, here to tell you uh, about this 51st uh, conference of ICANN. So we'll switch to English. Welcome, uh, everyone. For those of, uh, of you who have just joined us, we are about to start the FTC3 with a quick recap on what happened uh, during the last ICANN meeting, which was held in uh, Los Angeles towards the end of last year. Uh, we have uh, Tom McKenzie uh, with us to tell us a little bit about what happened. Um, Perhaps I can start by asking you, Tom, just to explain to us what ICANN is, uh, what it does. Uh, I Hi, uh, Sebast uh, Stefan, uh, and thank you for that question. I knew you were going to ask it. Uh, the answer to that question is uh, quite simple, but also quite complicated. Uh, ICANN is the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. It's a California-based organization that is in charge of nothing less than the stable and secure management of the domain name system, the DNS. Uh, it's an absolutely uh, critical organization, uh, but which is not necessarily known by uh, that many people. It's the organization which ensures that when you type the address HTTPS, Hyph colon slash slash uh, op3ft.org that you are reliably uh, re that the uh, resolvers reliably open uh, the website of the op3ft. So it's a very uh, it's an organisation which operates a very critical function. Um, I, in preparing this talk, uh, I found a very sort of helpful definition of, of the organization, um, which is this, that it's the organization which helps to preserve the operational stability of the internet, to promote competition, to achieve broad representation of the global internet community, and to develop policies appropriate to its mission through bottom-up, consensus-based processes. So in, that, in those few lines, that you can see that there are many reasons why an organization like the OP3FT developing an internet-based technology has an interest in participating uh, in this organization. Now, I'm, I'm sure you're <laughs> bursting with uh, more questions, but just before, um, I think it's important to say that uh, the ICANN, uh, just in terms of its organization is what's called a multi-stakeholder uh, organization. What that means is that all the organizations around the world, not only in the United States, of course, but in all countries around the world that make up what we recognize as the internet ecosystem come together under the umbrella of ICANN to agree on the policies for the stable and secure management of this thing, the DNS, which is made up of two parts, well, made up of more than two parts, really, but two uh, obvious parts, which are the human-readable uh, domain names, uh, which we know as the you know, URLs, um, and the machine-readable IP numbers. The, the, these two critical functions are ultimately the responsibility of ICANN and the global community of stakeholders who take part in this pro system. Um, uh, so that's um, just the sort of big picture. I don't, we, the, the tendency when uh, trying to describe uh, an organization like ICANN 
is that it, you quickly get uh, lost in all the details of, and complexities of this uh, organization, which regularly brings together, just to give you an idea, some 2,000 people from around the world. So it's a pretty big organization. So perhaps um, we, if, if we want to avoid getting lost in that detail, Tom, perhaps we can uh, go to the specifics of what OP3FT uh, does when we go to the ICANN meetings. Um, I understand that, uh, for example, you yourself presented to one of the groups uh, during uh, the LA meeting. Uh, and I also want to hear from Ben, uh, Ben Fister, who's standing behind you, uh, head of technical specs at OP3FT, uh, about um, some interesting encounters, I believe, with some of the more technically minded people in the ICANN community. But Tom, back to you first of all. Uh, just explain to us in a few words what it is that we do. Why do we go? Good question, and there are many reasons uh, why uh, the OP3FT uh, feels that it has a natural part to play in the discussions that take place during the ICANN meetings, uh, which happen three times a year. Uh, the first, and perhaps the most obvious reason, is that since April last year, uh, the OP3FT is the holder of a new GTLD, the Dot Frogans. The dot frogans, which is an essential security uh, aspect of the frogans technology. It's a new GTLD which is being used in a slightly different way from most, well, all the other GTLDs that have been delegated to date. But it's a GTLD, and as such, the OP3FT has a responsibility, I would uh, uh, say, to take part in ICANN meetings and participate in the, uh, in the discussions there, notably as part of the registrar, registry stakeholder group, which is one of the many groups that make up the ICANN system, and which I believe, uh, uh, Stefan, you were uh, instrumental in uh, ensuring that we were part of that uh, group. Uh, so one reason why we go to the uh, ICANN meetings is to take part uh, as a holder of a new GTLD. Another reason why we go to ICANN meetings is that uh, as the developer of a new internet-based technology for the publication of pages uh, using a distinct new addressing system, we are a new uh, emerging actor of the internet ecosystem. And one of the objectives of the ICANN is to bring together all the actors of the internet ecosystem and to ensure that we are engaged in a mutual dialogue and exchange and that we all agree on a certain set of principles uh, that have to do with the security and stability uh, of the internet. And um, so part of our uh, commitment to taking part in the ICANN process is to engage in, in uh, the other people, the other actors, ISO the ISOCs, the IETF, the uh, Numbers Resource Organization, all the organizations that make up the larger ICANN system. And, and this is when I'm going to hand over to uh, Ben uh, in, in, in just a minute, because another very important reason why we, uh, or actually there are two more reasons why uh, we, it's interesting for us to go to uh, ICANN meetings. The first is that the OP3FT uh, is uh, involved in the development um, of a number of technical specifications to do with its addressing system, uh, the uh, markup languages which will allow the publication of Frogan sites, um, a whole series of uh, technical specifications. And as such, uh, we have found it in, uh, productive to exchange with the communities uh, that regularly meet uh, at ICANN meetings. I think Ben will have uh, more specific details uh, about uh, the, uh, one of the groups, uh, one of the very high level groups uh, at ICANN working on international domain names, which are the, just to be clear about what we're talking about here, they are the country code extensions, the .frs, the .uks, etc., but written 
in uh, other scripts, non-Latin scripts, in Arabic, in Cyrillic, uh, Japanese, Chinese. Uh, there are some communities, um, working groups within ICANN working on these issues, and we have found that there is a very um, productive uh, dialogue to be had with them, and that's what Ben will tell you more about. Whilst you, whilst you hand the mic to, to Ben, Tom, let me just... Uh, um, Ben, your, your title uh, probably needs some explanation to those of us who uh, are not familiar with, with what uh, Head of Technical Specifications does. Uh, perhaps I can uh, preface that question uh, just by reminding everyone that Frogan's addresses are truly international, which is not, uh, unfortunately, the case of the DNS, the Domain Name Systems Addressing System. Uh, so there's lots of work going on at ICANN on what we call IDNs, internationalized domain names, which uh, are designed to allow people to use their native scripts when they are typing in a web address. Uh, those problems have uh, become non-existent or are non-existent uh, with the Frogan's technology because from the ground up it was designed to uh, take into account all sorts of uh, language sets and scripts that uh, are common used around the world. So uh, perhaps I can ask you, Ben, to just uh, say a few words about what it is that you do and then explain to us how you interacted with those specific groups at ICANN. Sure, Stefan. Um, I'm, uh, my official title is Head of Technical Specifications. We have a, a team at OP3FT uh, that does the research and development and also the drafting of the specifications. It's an iterative process. Uh, we go back and forth quite a bit. We spend a lot of our time researching in existing international standards, especially the first two specifications we published concern the international Froggans address pattern um, and the rules concerning the creation of addresses. Um, if you can maybe go on the next slide, you get a better idea of what's going on. Um, we've, uh, as a part of the, the, the uh, development team, uh, we, we've done a lot of research into existing standards uh, there has been work going on for decades, literally, concerning the, the Unicode standard, for example, defined an, a universal character set, a very ambitious project, to cover all the, all the characters, all the ideographs used in all of the world's languages. That was a starting point. That's a very large specification, very complex. Um, and we use that as the basis for our first specification, the uh, International Froggins Address Pattern. Uh, that uh, was developed by the Unicode Consortium, and it's been a, a work in progress over the past well, maybe 15 years. Uh, they're currently on version 7 um, of that, that specification. Um, there are other, many other groups involved in, in defining specifications concerning address patterns uh, and international domain names. Um, as Stefan pointed out, we're lucky in a way in that uh, we came along a, a bit later and were able to... to to build on existing specifications. Um, the, a lot of the, the work that was is done before for DNS concerns internationalized domain names, that's I-Z-E-D. Uh, th that is to say the existing domain names are basically were designed to be in ASCII only, in Latin only characters. <clears throat> and now they've been internationalized. So people can create a, 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 a domain name in Kanji, for example. However, with the current IDN any system, that address in Kanji is actually translated into a series, into an ASCII string. Um, we're lucky, we, we've, we have a native system, so from the ground up, we work directly with uh, Unicode characters. So we're able to have a truly international uh, addressing pattern. So many of these standards have been developed over the years um, by various groups, um, and the uh, ICANN in particular has been, in the last couple of years, with the arrival, with the advent of the CC uh, TLDs, the generic top-level domains, they're now opening up much more <coughs> to internationalized characters. And so they're currently working, they set up a system um, of rules called label generation rules, LGRs. Those rules define which code points can be used in the root zone, that is the basic top-level uh, domain <coughs> for all internet sites. Uh, those rules are uh, a source of potential security threats. So they are very, very careful about what characters can be used and cannot be used in the uh, root-level domain. 
Uh, security is a, a core concern for us at OP3FT. So we also want to make sure that we can look very carefully at the characters that can be used, the code points that can be used in a frog address. Um, another, the second uh, issue concerns uh, the, the uh, comparison of addresses among themselves. <coughs> um, thank you. Um, currently, um, the, uh, the ICANN has set up uh, what they call generation panels. These are groups of linguistic experts who, for each different script, uh, the Hebrew script, the Latin script, the Cyrillic script, they define the characters, the code points, that are eligible to be used in an address in the top-level domain uh, for that given script. Um, they also concern worried about things called variants. That is, there can be different ways to write a single character. For example, the, the, the E accent character, ou accent aigu in French, that can be written in various ways, uh, uh, in a, in a, represented in different, different manners on a computer. You can have a single code point, which is E accent, E with an accent, or you can have two letters, the letter E and a second code point with the accent. Uh, so we have to be careful when you're defining an address is you have two ways to write the address, which ones is valid, do they point to the same address, et cetera. All those types of issues have to be taken care of and defined um, by generation panels. <coughs> so the ICANN is in the process of establishing generation panels. They have currently, I think, 12, which are either currently seated or in the process of being formed. And each of these generation panels for a given script will define the code points that, are usable, that can be used in that script. Um, it's, we are very interested in the work that they've done. However, we've had to, to take the lead to some extent because we published our specification. This is a core part of the Frogans technology. And we've been obliged to publish our, our specification to make some choices to look into these issues and to come up with innovative solutions. Um, and those solutions are sort of uh, similar in parallel to the solutions being developed by the generation panels. However, in some, to some extent, we're one step ahead of them on a certain number of issues. So there's a lot of interest at ICANN. Uh, I've met, met when, <clears throat> with some people in Los Angeles. There'll be another meeting coming up in Singapore in a few weeks. And we actually have been invited to make a presentation there talking about our technology, the way we have chosen to address some of these issues concerning uh, internationalized domain names. So it's a uh, it's an in very interesting and uh, ex profitable exchange, both for us at OP3 FT and for the generation panels and uh, what they call the integration panel, which is a, a single panel that takes the rules from all these 10, 12, 14 uh, language specific generation panels and integrates them into a single set of rules, which concerns all of the domain names in the root zone. Thanks, Ben. I was interested to hear you say that uh, in some instances or in some specific cases, we are actually uh, a step ahead of the work being done uh, through those uh, different panels on uh, internationalized uh, domain or addressing technology. Um, is it possible for you to elaborate just slightly on that? What, what was the initial reaction to the Frogan's technology when you uh, turned up at these meetings, said, explained what we were doing, how we'd gone about it, obviously taking full advantage of, uh, as you mentioned earlier on, being last in the room, as it were. So we've, we've come after some of these technologies were first developed and been able to take full advantage of what has been done already. But I'm curious to understand what the reaction was. How are we um, ahead of this work and how can we, f is there a way that, that we're feeding into this work uh, um, to help them, for example, solve some of these problems? Well, <clears throat> we have a, a fairly unique position in that we have a single core registry, the FCR, the Froggins Core Registry, which is a single large database, if you will, a repository, which will contain all of the addresses of all the Froggins network names and site names, all the Froggins addresses worldwide in all scripts in all languages. With uh, country, country code top-level domains, CCTLDs, the CC is a, key, a core part of that description, country code. Those are country-specific. So for example, in France, you have the .fr, 
uh, or in, in, in China, you might have the dot .cn, for example. They define, the, the generation panel for Chinese defines the, the code points that can be used in an address in the dot .cn domain. Um, however, the, the top level domains, the CCTLD, where you have dot .cn, you also have dot .frogans, you have dot, dot .sport, dot .paris, all sorts of new domains. There's, there's a, how many others, Stefan? There's a, a few hundred, aren't there, that have been defined? In all, 1,930 were applied for uh, initially, and that uh, was released in uh, June 2012, that list of new domains that were applied for. We call them new GTLDs. Uh, right now, there are in excess of 400 delegated, which means that they've been inserted into the internet route, and they are active on the internet. So you can already, for example, uh, one TLD that you mentioned, which was uh, .paris, you can always already buy .paris addresses. For example, I've got Stefan. Paris. Right. Okay. Yeah, so these, these uh, top-level domains, generic top-level domains, uh, they have to be a little bit careful when they're assigning addresses to make sure that there's not problems of confusability. We talked the last FTC about certain characters that look very much alike. In Latin, for example, the letter uh, L, lowercase l, the letter 1, uh, or the number 1, uh, and the letter I are all, all look fairly similar. They're hard to distinguish. So when someone chooses a, a, a top-level domain name, uh, you have to be careful that the, you don't look to have two domains which look very similar because uh, someone who's not terribly honest could try to steal clients who want to go to, to one, one site and will end up at another site. So these, these issues of confusability are something we've looked at very carefully uh, when we define the, the Frog's address composition rules. Uh, that specification goes into great detail about confusability issues, how we can resolve them both within a single script and also across different scripts. If you want more information on that, come back tomorrow night. We're going to have a detailed demonstration of how the address resolution works uh, for, for, uh, and how we deal with confusability issues. So we'll go into more detail on that tomorrow. Nicely done. I'm sure people will be back to learn more. Um, just one last uh, question, if I may, and perhaps we'll have uh, a few moments to open it up uh, for questions from the floor. Um, there's never been a project of this scope. I mean, clearly, when you go to ICANN, you, you've mentioned all the groups. Uh, these are individuals. Uh, entities, uh, companies coming in from all directions. Uh, all working on this project. Uh, there's never been anyone that's attempted to do this within one single structure, the way OP3FT is doing it now. Um, surely there must be... Uh, what's the reaction? Let's just put it that way. What's the reaction you get when you explain the scope of what OP3FT is doing? People are, are um, usually... Uh, surprised and uh, impressed by the scope and the, the ambition of the, the Frogans project. We're really trying to do something that's fairly innovative. And uh, they're very interested, they're intrigued. Many are skeptical, they aren't sure it's going to work. They have some technical questions which come up very quickly. And we try to provide responses to those questions. Uh, but there's a lot of, uh, lot of interest, I think, uh, out there. People will be, will be interested to, to, in the follow-up questions. Ben, thanks very much. Uh, perhaps I can just uh, hand it back to Tom for a final word before we uh, open it up for questions. Yeah, I mean, I was just going to add uh, that um, the complexity of the, or the scope of the uh, Frogans project, as you just described it, is such that uh, we have felt the need to, uh, whenever we go to ICANN, to explain the project to all the different communities within it. And so you uh, gave uh, a, a very broad presentation of the project to the GNSO uh, community, uh, which is a very large branch uh, of the ICANN system because it deals with all the generic uh, top-level domains. Uh, before that, uh, Alexis, uh, the co-founder of the project, uh, gave a uh, presentation to another very important branch of the ICANN system called the Government Advisory Committee, the GAC. Um, and that ensured that at least on the, from a sort of political perspective that people understood where we were coming from. And then I uh, 
Ben, of course, uh, has been uh, giving presentations to the technical uh, addressing communities. And at the last ICANN meeting in Los Angeles, uh, I um, gave a presentation to the what's called the At Large. It's, it's one of the three supporting organizations uh, within ICANN. And the At Large uh, uh, Advisory Committee... <laughs> I see Sebastien Bachelet waving furiously at me, at me and I wonder what he's going to say to me. Um, uh, the at-large uh, community uh, represents a broad um, uh, range of internet uh, users. So uh, that really, I hope, was starting to answer uh, the, your question. Thanks, Tom. Um, I think what you, if we summarize what uh, you've both uh, told us so far, uh, OP3FT is uh, extremely um, involved in all these processes as part of its mission to promote the Frogans technology. We are meeting with as many people as we can, explaining what we're doing, and both uh, explaining it to them and getting feedback from them. So we're, we're, uh, it's a win-win situation for everybody. Uh, people can understand what we're doing, and we can learn from their experience. So um, perhaps I can open it up for questions from the, from the floor, if you're not... Uh, Confident in English, please ask your question in French. Si, si vous n'êtes pas, s'il y a un problème en, de parler anglais, posez votre question en français, il n'y a pas de problème. Uh, and just make sure you wave at me hard because I've got a light shining in my eyes and I can't see much, but uh, <laughs> are there any questions? Go ahead, Joy Manuel. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Benjamin. Um, Stefan, what about the registry stakeholder group where the Hopi Tree of Tea is now well represented? Yeah, uh, one of the groups that um, uh, Tom mentioned earlier on is the GNSO, which is the policy making body for generic TLDs. So anything to do with uh, generic TLDs from uh, the legacy TLDs like .com to the new GTLDs that we talked about a minute ago like .paris, um, the rules for uh, that space, uh, those rules are, are um, thought up, worked on, developed within the GNSO. And the GNSO itself is made up of several groups. Um, and one of them is the registry stakeholder group. Registries are those entities that manage a database uh, of addresses for a TLD. So, for example, uh, the registry for dot .paris is the city of Paris. The res registry for .com is Verisign, uh, an American company. And um, as part of our initiative to secure .frogans TLD, we have become a registry. We operate a new GTLD. We don't operate it in quite the same way as uh, the other TLDs are operated, and I won't steal any of Ben's thunder from to for tomorrow. Uh, I won't go into any more detail there, but uh, uh, we are a registry operator. So we have um, uh, joined the registry stakeholder group. We are involved in that work, and that helps us not only once once again, interact with um, like-minded people, people that have the same problems that we do or are looking at, at uh, uh, similar problems and solutions or different problems and solutions. But it's also a way to get uh, uh, stay keenly involved in what ICANN does. So um, we are, uh, I think we've been a member of the registry stakeholder group um, for the last six months and uh, we're excited to be there. Thank you, Stefan. Any further questions? Yes, I see a hand. Joe has his hand up. Hi. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. 
Yeah, you said that. Um, Please introduce well, yourself. My, my name is Joe. Uh, Joe Katie. Um, I work with uh, the Frogans. Ah, thank you. Uh, my name is Joe Katie. I work with um, SDG Interactive, which is uh, involved in the Frogans project. Um, you said that you at ICANN, for instance, you've been meeting with uh, the people involved with international domain names, covering very specific technical issues. Are there other groups that I can that uh, where there are or plan to have you're planning to have uh, discussions with uh, um, on other technical issues such as um, who is or um, uh, as an example or or anything else that comes to mind that we're uh, you know in the future or even in the present uh, you're looking at um, working collaborating. Uh, the uh, ICANN system is so rich uh, that there will be many opportunities as we uh, continue to develop uh, uh, specifications to engage in uh, conversations with the other groups, like the who, the who is working groups. We, we know them, we are in contact with them today. We haven't formally started any uh, kind of discussion with them uh, yet. Uh, ben may have other uh, uh, ideas of uh, groups that uh, he, has, he has come across. Uh, but there's, there's one, it, it's not so much a technical group, but uh, there's a, a very important group of uh, registrars. We have met many domain name registrars uh, who are in the business of selling domain names, uh, but who, uh, to whom we have uh, presented the opportunities that uh, the Frogans Project presents in terms of uh, the selling of these, this new kind of address, the Frogans address. And for registrars, it represents uh, an opportunity to diversify their offers. Uh, and uh, we have you know, had quite a, a very interesting uh, to and fro uh, with uh, many groups from all over the world uh, uh, in that category. Uh, ben, do you? Um, no, uh, there, as you mentioned, there are, there are several, several uh, technical groups within ICANN, there, there are dozens, and we have preliminary contacts with some of them. We will be, as we move forward, moving on to new specifications, we'll be discussing more and more with different groups. One of the points I want to make, Joe, to give me an opportunity, is that we're trying to exchange information and also uh, reciprocally use their information and use their, their expertise. For example, the generation uh, panels we talked about earlier on, they have the expertise in the various scripts used around the world. We at OP3FT do not have expertise in all of those languages, so we're trying to um, work with them, and as they, in, as in the future, they start to publish the results of the generation panels, none have been published thus far. Uh, when they started to publish the rules and the rules are approved by the integration panel, we then intend to adapt our own technical specifications, if necessary, to integrate their own uh, suggestions. So we're trying to make it a, a back and forth issue. Thanks very much. Um, thanks for that question. I, I, I should just add that uh, we, uh, the group that I'm part of, uh, does a lot of outreach. We, we're uh, often going to uh, either meet with people or, or participate in conferences. Uh, you'll hear a little bit about a recent event that we we attended in tomorrow's um, during tomorrow's program. So uh, I'll leave it there for now. But uh, we do uh, outreach to a lot of other um, groups and go to a, a lot of other events. Uh, in the same, um, the, the approach remains that we are going to meet people, explain the technology, show them the technology, get feedback, which helps us also improve the technology as we go along. So I hope that answers your question. Um, and we will have to end uh, this particular part of our program now. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for explaining what you did to us.